in the middle of the top section. Let me just, okay, before we even identify the exact location, we had a, a, a very painful discussion yesterday for a very, very legitimate and important reason. What, what prompted it, what preempted it is the Rebbe is speaking about the sun not having a stake in whether it illumin- its, its light illuminates or it doesn't. And the similar thing, a candle in the room. And this is perplexing. What are you talking about? The sun, of course the sun doesn't have any, any stake in it. The sun is, is, is just a dumb fire. So in order to give us a means for, to, to approach this and to understand it, <coughs> Let me just go straight to the point and then we'll we'll see. The most important point in this whole thing is this. In everything, the sun, the candle, the house, in absolute everything, there's another factor that we miss. Again, I'm going to step over a little bit just to to display it, to make us aware that there's a factor that we do not recognize of of tremendous importance, a factor of tremendous importance. And I said this one time, but when you say two times two equals to four, It's a very simple, very simple formula. <clears throat> what makes the four? The fact that you have two, and then you have the other two. You count them over, you have four. The only thing that contributes to so the four is that the, these two and these two. That's the way it seems to us. But that's not correct. That's not true. There is an there is another factor that is that is of tremendous importance in this whole, f- in this whole formula. And that is the, facil- the, the, the accommodator, the facilitator for two and two. In order to have two, you have to have th- that which accommodates two. In, you know, in order to have two times two, you have to have that which accommodates two times two. We are totally oblivious to that. To us, the two create a room for a, a room for themselves and, and, and themselves. The four can give, that's not true. The reason that we take it so for granted, the reason that we're not aware of this necessity, here is a very important thing. The reason we're not aware of this necessity is due to the fact <coughs> that this accommodation, the background, is provided by God Himself. And it provides a, a limitless uh, uh, support. Whatever you can concoct in, in your world, he will support it. But the support is there. It's necessary. It is not the world, the phenomenon two and two that creates four. It is two and food that, <coughs> that, that utilizes the accommodation that they should provide for four. That's essentially what the truth is. This accommodation is a divine uh, element in, in everything that exists. This is one our whole discussion yesterday about Mars and so on. What is the big difference? Between a house on Earth and a house on Mars, is, a house on Earth has a divine presence. A house on Mars does not have a divine presence. And thus, it's a it, it, it's not worlds apart. It completely it's it's not real. 
Really, is that which you deem should declare and I'm creating it. But you know, you borrow it God's creation. That which people imagine and concoct and and, and <coughs> project is just not real. Doesn't have the divine reality. It's like you imagine something being there. Having said that, actually, we said it yesterday, <coughs> that from all that discussion, we became clear that without ourselves being aware consciously, we are actually including in our own thinking the divine support and, 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 and <coughs> substantiation of whatever happens in the world. And that substantiation is of enormous significance. A house on earth is, a, is substantiated by the divine will. A house on Mars is not. This is why it has no significance. Coming back to what we are talking over here. We say the sun <coughs> is not bothered by the fact that its line does not reach its target. So we said the sun, of course, the sun, the sun is not, is not, in, 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 is not conscious. And here again, we are failing to recognize the sun is not conscious, but the sun was created with a, with, with, with a, significant, a significant presence. That presence is provided to it by his divine intent. The fact that the sun illuminates the entire world <coughs> with such all-encompassing embracement of embracing of light, this is a divine contribution to the to the to the world. Like we said, God created light in the first day. Why did God have to create light? All he had to do is, is put up a fire and be light. The answer is, this is, we never got to, to give the answer. The answer is that God created light. He brought light from a heavenly reality. The world does not have light by moral definition. World is, is, is by definition dark. Light is a heavenly reality. <clears throat> and I want to elaborate on this a little bit more. Why do we say that light is a heavenly reality? Touch is a world in reality. Light is a heavenly reality. <clears throat> When you touch something, you become aware of its presence by an actual effect of the object upon your hand. That has a, so to speak, a clear worldly explanation. How come you know that there's a table over here? Sight has no tangibility whatsoever. There's no effect. You see everything. You see the entire world. Without as much as touching it or coming closer to it or even relating to it. You see it again automatically. The reason you see it automatically, effortlessly, is because there's a divine truth to it. It does not need to be convincing. It does not need to be experienced. It's beyond experienced. It's a divine statement of its being. Divine cannot be proven. It does not need any proof. It's beyond the whole question of existence. Does it or does it not? As the Ramam expresses it, 
The first principle of wisdom is that there is a first being, a first being. First being means he has. It's not a being that can, that that comes to into being because he's proven by some other experience. This first quality, this first being quality, this is what's manifest, what comes along with every divine effect. Which is why <coughs> we can see things without being affected, without touch, without any kind of experience. And yet it's real. Not only it's real. Sight convinces us, is much more convincing to us than anything else, than any other experience. It, do, it does seem like he made, all that being true, it does seem like he made a category of existence called doinem that are not mutra one way or another unless we're talking on the level of the stones do complain if we're not if we're stepping on them and not reviewing torah okay very good so here uh, i am um, let let let's take this up we discussed that's why the first motion in here was the stone <coughs> It is true, the stone per se is not mutrad. It's not, nor the sun. Okay, wait, wait a second, wait a second. The whole phenomenon of mutrad, why is it mutrad? Concerned. Why, why are you concerned? The answer is, because in everything that exists, in the stone or the sun, there's a divine element. Which we fail to, to to even address. So, and and if we were attending to that, we would notice how the stone is dissatisfied. The the divine element in the stone, not the stone. Okay, and so to the sun. And so to the sun. Fine. That's absolutely true. Because the divine element this is an, an unintangible thing. This is a reality beyond worldly definition. There is nothing in the world that does not have the divine element. The divine element is a permeating truth. A truth that goes from the top, from the source and of sources, to all the way to the most uh, uh, less, less moment of, 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 of practicality. Again, let's come back to the question of Mars versus the Earth. <clears throat> when we walk on Earth, I will have to step away for a moment in order to, to demonstrate what I want to say. This is something which we already discussed in the past many times. <clears throat> we have an interesting phenomenon. There are people that, that we call um, in the shul, that people who constantly walk back and forth. What is it called? Uh, paces. Uh, paces. In the shul, constantly walking back and forth. The shul can be as big as 770, and he's going back and forth from one end to the other. And he can go indefinitely. If he should cover this much distance in the street, he'll get exhausted. And yet, in the shul, he, he, he can go on indefinitely. Because in the shul, he is constantly being supported by the environment. It does not sense that he is being challenged and he is walking someplace. He is always in the same place. The physical movement of the land legs is totally insignificant in this. Because he is, so to speak, basically where he belongs, and he doesn't feel the, 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 the challenge and the exhaustion of, of the walking.
coming back, this is just to demonstrate that the context, especially particularly the divine context, changes the entire perspective, the entire experience. <clears throat> Start talking about the stone. There's a stone on earth. Stone is, 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 is inanimate, does not the difference, and so forth. Yet still, just like in the case of the, of the stoker, of the, of the baser, there is a place where the stone belongs, by divine design. And if you break it away from that from that reality, you're not affecting the, the physical stone, you're affecting its spiritual reality, its divine reality. And just as in the case of the house on Mars, we say the house on Mars, the house does not relate to Mars. The house is, is inanimate, it doesn't, it doesn't relate to anything, but there's a difference. Because there's a spirit in the structure of a house. On Earth, it fits. On Mars, it doesn't. Despite the fact that it's, it's, it's just a physical structure. We, and this is the point that we made yesterday, <coughs> And, and, and a great effort today. We do not recognize, due to, to, to habit, and due to, to short-sightedness, we do not take cognizance of the divine effect of our own thinking on a basic level. Yet it is there, not only it is there all the time, it is, it is the basis for all other things that occur. We can conceptualize making a home out of a house. Why? Because it's on earth. That's, a prim that's its primary reason. Not because of its structure and comfort. But because it's, it has a, a divine reality. This is its primary cause. We don't pay attention to that. Like I said before, two times two equals to four and a half. Of course, two equals to four and a half. We don't even recognize that two times two equals to four. It, 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 there's a divine provision for four. It's not the two that creates the four. It is the fact that there's a divine provision that there should be, be able to be four. If not for that provision, it, it couldn't be. We don't pay attention to it. We don't recognize it. Because divine provision is limitless. As long as you stay on earth, so to speak, in reality, it is it's going to be there. If you move out of its reality, you go to Mars, then you're going to lose it. How, how is it not confused with the worldly provision? How, how, how is it not confused with a worldly provision. He, which, which one? In Mars? Two, no, two times two, or... We're saying it's, 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 um, it's a godly provision that we're just not focusing on. That's right, we're not it's aware seem, of it. Seem, Right. Seemingly, there's a sort of a worldly context that um, provides for so much. Absolutely. And you could sort of... Absolutely, and the answer is quite simple. Just like the difference between the earth and, and the Mars. The divine provision is omnipresent. 
is a limitless provision and we are totally unaware of it. That that distinguishes it from a worldly... I'm just saying, there's so many mathematicians, kids learning math who have no conscious cognizance this, of this zero, being zero, godly of course, worlds. Of course, because worlds. everything so. is based on... on, on, on <coughs> And, and the worldly units. Exactly. So seemingly the world provides this kind of context. No, no, has to show. The world has that context. It it's provided by divine by, by the divine creation. Behoraya, this is why I brought this up with Mars. Take the same thing, translate the same thing on Mars, it's not gonna work. Because there is no divine provision for for a for a house in a Mars. You could put it out, sure, physically, but it's not a house. So we do not become aware of it until you get this this wild contrast. But when you get when you become aware of it, it's clear. In everything that we that we accept as as granted, effortless reality, there is a divine backing background to it. And we take that. This is the reality in which we, in which we function. This reality with which we <coughs> we relate to, without any challenge. To the extent, and here is also in your face. Demonstration. <coughs> we are alive and well, Bar Hashem. And if you ask anybody, what makes you live? Well, I have a heart that pumps blood. And the blood flows through the vessels. But life, why don't you create another dummy that will have blood pumped through its, through its veins and, and bring it to life? Not only will it never happen, but you even even you wouldn't even it, 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 it go that way. Because life is a divine provision. You are totally oblivious to it. You don't pay attention to it. You say, "All I have to take pay, take care of my body, and my feet, and my stomach." And my, but the, the, the neshama, who cares about the neshama? God is taking care of that. This is this is not in my realm. This is in a different. This is on a different level. I cannot contribute to it. I cannot detract from it. This is this is a super worldly presence in the world. That's exactly what it is. And the only <coughs> worldly presence, so it's in world presence that attends to that presence, is the Torah. That speaks about the show. Really, I just I I had one more half half a sentence to finish. The Torah says, "You're in the world, yes, but eat kosher. Don't mix meat and and, and dairy, because that's detrimental to what to your neshama. Nothing to do with your goof." Yes, Bora. So uh, this may be coming out of left field. Why would we say that a house on Mars is not within the divine plan? If it wouldn't be in the divine plan, so nobody could make a spaceship that goes there, or the equipment that lets them breathe over there. Why isn't that also? It's not a house, but why isn't it part of the divine plan? <clears throat> why is it not part of my plan? <clears throat> I'll tell you why. Uh, it, it, the, the question why it's not in my plan is it's not a fair question that they have to ask God himself. But uh, but um, what makes us say it's not in the divine plan? Why? Yeah, yeah, that's what I meant to say. What makes us say it's not part of it the makes divine plan? It makes us say it's not in my plan is that because on the very fundamental, the very fundamental, the very basic provisions 
that it has to provide, it doesn't happen without our interference. The divine plan is that which God, God provides. If we have <clears throat> an artificial um, aspiration, we have, <clears throat> pardon me, uh, oxygen provided uh, uh, machinery. You can live this way. This is not life. Why not? Because life is that which, which you live directly from the divine provision. That's what life is. Life you live is, is life when you live with the source of life. Not an artificial a living body. That's not life. Life is just con- which is drawn and uh, connected, totally intricately united with the source of life. That's life. This is why we say that is, this is not divine. You could build, presumably, you fly up to Mars. And, and fly to space or whatever it is. And, uh, how long does it take to go to, 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 to Mars? Two and a half years or something like that? But you can get there and put up a, a, a house, quote unquote. And you will be putting up a house over there is not a house, it's a, a mimicking a house. It's not a house. A house means that the house is, is placed in a place. That is that is livable and meant to be lived. Putting up a house on Mars, you are you are relating to to the to the platform where you're building it in a totally superficial, meaningless manner. On Earth, it it, it embraces you. It's, it's, it's supportive of that. Up there, it's not supportive. So you have what's called the, the external, the, 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 the heterogeneous only, not the reality. is all to give us a means to understand the words in the mind. <clears throat> I will start from the line that begins with the Hashpia. It, it's smack in the middle of that top, top section. We talk about Shmashat, but in oil it is not thusly that if the Makabal is not a, a proper receptacle, then there's, there's an effect, a reciprocal effect. <coughs> and how is it in oil? <coughs> oil is this intangible element emanating from an etzim. Or bring the presence of the earth, and this is still left. This is still coming. What, how, what the atom contributes? But oil is this intangible thing. Then in, in, in contrast to shafa, the gam kshein oil meir. That even when the oil is not meir, which means in this context the shemesh provides light, but the oil does not. The light of the shemesh does not have its effect because there's a cloud that blo- blocks the light. All fashion, a very simple, a very simple interference. It's not made. It doesn't fulfill its ultimate mission. There is no change in the shemesh. Again, we ask, <laughs> how can it be a change in the shemesh? It's a change in the shemesh because the union that the shemesh provides this oil is based on the reality of the shemesh. The reality of the shemesh is defined by the divine creation. 
It's not a physical chemistry, it is the reality of, of its creation. And the oil is drawn from the sun's vaziv, Bishova. Exactly, equally, Kmoi im hoya meyabayom aziv, even exactly as if it were reaching the world and illuminating it. Behind her, which we need, imele hoya, and I'm the war no clouds. Clearly, we are talking about the different aspect of the sun than its physical structure. Clearly, the physical structure doesn't matter. But the reality of the sun, the sun is not in physical structure. The outer of the sun is, is divine presence, divine reality. Just like the reality of the earth is not what Mars can provide. Mars can actually replace the earth. Although he can provide the physical base, but he cannot replace the earth. Because it is a fine presence in the, in the earth. That is the reality of everything. The reality of everything is basically its divine base. The divine base of the sun, the sun is, it was meant to provide light and illuminate the world. If it does not, interfering it with, 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 with its reality. This is a first step into understanding it. <clears throat> we still have very challenging terms of here. But I, what, I didn't understand the last thing you said. If it does not, if it does not, not if it does not if, 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 go all the way to the point of what it's meant to affect, <clears throat> you're interfering with the reality itself of the sun. It's interfering with the reality. Yeah. Ah, oh, as you say, but the sun doesn't know the first thing about it. It knows. Not the sun, the physical sun, but it, it, its divine presence. It's, it, 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 this physical sun is a crea- divine creation. <coughs> and not distantly so, so to speak. It was created and then it becomes sun. No. On an ongoing basis, it represents a divine element on an ongoing basis. If you interfere with that, you interfere with the very, the very, with the very reality of its own be- being. There is a... Let's say it doesn't. Huh? Let's say it doesn't. I'm sorry? So it doesn't make a, a difference to the sun? doesn't make a difference to the sun. That's right. Because it's it's only how order. It should. That, that's the whole perplexing. Because it's only how order. If it were a real a, a sun effort, then it would make a difference. But it doesn't make a difference, not because the sun is dumb, but because the 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 the, the, the input that the sun puts into the light is a very superficial aspect. Is a, is a, is only how that's why it's not affected. Okay, let me just go to the next the oil haneir, the candle light. Here we have words that are even more challenging than, than we had till now. As the light of the camp. Why did Rabbi have to bring oil on there? We have an oil on so the sun. Why oil on there? You wait a minute. When you have light the candle, machnisi machnisi When you bring the the candle, the uh, candlelight into the house, memele memele, then automatically, or effortlessly, or uh, effortlessly means by its very reality. Let's make memele by its very reality. What happens by its very reality? Habayis meir. And I pointed out several times over these days, the word mayor over here seems to be out of context. Mayor means it shines. If you're saying that the sun, the house become visible, which means it's lit up, the word should have been a bias muor, not mayor.
זה מה שהסקריר הבייס מאיר. The house shines. What does it mean the house shines? So this discussion that we had in, in, now will bring us, will uh, enable us to, to relate and to understand the science. <coughs> <coughs> if you say a house mu or the house is lit up, we're talking about the physical structure of the house. We're not talking about a house. We're talking about the replica of a house, the, the form of a house. The form of the house is mu. Habai is mu. We're talking about the the essence of a house. What is a house about? The home element. The home element is made, it shines, it speaks for itself. It tells you what it stands for. <laughs> 